Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at a laptop that is very reasonably priced right now, only $499. This is the Dell Inspiron 147435. And although this looks like a laptop on the surface, it is actually a two-in-one where you can fold the display back here and use it as a tablet or even put it into a display mode when you are on a plane or something like that. So a pretty versatile device here. Now this is running with an AMD Ryzen processor, so it actually is pretty good for casual gaming in addition to casual computing. And we're going to take a closer look at what this device is all about in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Dell. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this two-in-one is all about. Now the price on this will vary based on configuration. The unit that we have here is the entry level version. This has a Ryzen 5 7530U processor. It has eight gigabytes of RAM. The RAM is in dual channel mode, so you get the most performance out of it. However, the memory is soldered onto the motherboard and cannot be upgraded. Prior editions of this laptop allowed you to do that. Here you will be stuck with the amount of RAM you choose when you buy it. There is though a 16 gigabyte variant also available. This has 512 gigabytes of storage, which is replaceable along with a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E radio for getting it on your wireless network. And a little earlier, I did test that Wi-Fi out. It actually did a pretty nice job moving files around the network here as we were preparing to shoot the review. So all in, I think a decent performer uh, for what you might pay for it. Now the display on this one is nothing spectacular but adequate. It is a 14 inch display running at 1920 by 1200. It is an IPS display. It is a touch screen, of course, because when you flip it into tablet mode, you need to interact with it somehow. It only though comes up at about 250 nits of brightness and it doesn't have color calibration that is suitable for professional work. But again, for casual use, it is just fine and very, very functional. And the display runs at 60 hertz and is in a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So the display is a little taller than the 1080p displays that this class of laptop would have in the recent past. There is a webcam here at the top. It is a 1080p webcam. You also have a manual shutter here for covering up the lens. I was actually very pleased with the quality of the imagery coming out of this camera. So if you are doing Zoom calls and other types of remote work, I think you're gonna look pretty nice on this machine, which was a nice surprise. It weighs 3.48 pounds, about three and a half pounds or 1.58 kilograms. A little on the heavier side, but the lower cost laptops like this tend to be heavier than the ones you might pay more for. It is mostly made out of plastic, but it doesn't feel cheap. So it's got a nice feel to it, although it lacks the rigidity you would get out of a laptop that was made out of metal. And the keyboard here is pretty nice. This is your standard Dell layout. The keys are nicely spaced. I did notice the key travel, in other words, how far the key pushes down was a bit shallow. So that took a little bit of getting used to, but beyond that, it felt pretty good. What was nice about this keyboard is that it's backlit. So you have two levels of lighting that you can apply to the keys when you're in a completely dark room. You also get a fingerprint reader here at the top for logging in faster. So all nice things to have here on what is relatively a budget price. You also have a decent trackpad here. This is in line with other Dell trackpads that I've looked at. It feels pretty accurate and no complaints on the input side. On the left-hand side of the unit here, you do have a couple of ports worth mentioning. This is an HDMI output, but this is only HDMI 1.4 which means that you're not gonna get 60 frames per second of 4K video out of this HDMI port. However, there are two full service USB type C ports here, also on the left hand side of the unit. Both of these will support display output, which will get you up to that resolution and frame rate if you need it. You can also power the laptop through these ports and of course use USB data devices. These are not USB 4 though, they're not Thunderbolt, they are USB 3.2, which will max out at 10 gigabits per second each, but still very functional and nice to have the ports there. You also have a full-size SD card reader here on the right-hand side. 
The cards do stick out a bit when they're inserted, so you can't walk around with a card all the time, but you do have the ability to offload your cameras quickly. Here you have a USB-A port, and this is a USB-3 speed port, and you get a headphone microphone jack over here. So pretty nice port selection here and all in a nice compact package. Now the speakers on this are upward firing, at least when you are in laptop mode. They actually sound pretty good, nice and clear, a good range of sound, not as loud as I would like them to be, but still better than expected. They do though become downward facing speakers when you move the laptop into its display mode here, and then they get a little muffled depending on what kind of surface they're on. But as I was using this as a laptop, I was very pleased with the overall audio quality. Battery life isn't bad on this either. If you stick to the basics and keep the display brightness down a bit, you should be able to get 10 to 11 hours out of it. If you are gaming or doing things that stress the processor a bit more, that of course will impact battery life more significantly. Let's take a look now and see how this thing performs. All right, we'll start off with the basics here by going to the nasa.gov homepage and see how everything springs up here. And because we have a touch display, we can navigate with our fingers if we want. I can go in here and explore some internship opportunities and get a new direction in life if I want as well. And overall, I found it to render pages here very quickly and you shouldn't have any problems doing web browsing or word processing or spreadsheets or all the sorts of things that this computer was designed for. A little bit earlier, we also checked out YouTube. I played a 1080p 60 frames per second video on the laptop here. We did have a couple of drop frames when it first started. That's something I see quite a bit. But after that, the video was able to play back just fine without any hiccups. So if you were planning to use this as a media consumption device, it should perform well doing that. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 272. That puts this machine pretty much in line with other Ryzen processors on similarly priced laptops. Now this does support Dell Pen input but it does not work with the USI standard that is becoming more and more prevalent. They did not send us a Dell pen for this review, so I was unable to test the pen functionality on this particular device. But we did test video editing, and we did that on DaVinci Resolve, and I was using some 4K 60 frames per second footage, and surprisingly, it actually did okay doing these types of basic edits. And I was surprised by that because this doesn't have a lot of memory, only eight gigabytes of RAM that share between the system and the video. But as you can see here, it was actually going pretty smoothly here, doing some basic cuts. I would say though, if you were doing more advanced video editing like color grading or something that was a little more beyond a standard dissolve here, I think you will certainly run into trouble. So very basic editing, basic 4K and basic 1080p should be fine but other types of editing, I think you'll want something more powerful. So let's take a look at some games now. This is Red Dead Redemption 2 running at the lowest settings at 1280 by 800. This is essentially like a 720p resolution. We were able to get around 30 frames per second. It most of the time hovered in the high 20s, so it's definitely nowhere near 60, but it is playable at that resolution, which was a surprise actually, especially given how little RAM this machine has on board. We also tested Fortnite. There we saw a little more variability. This was also run at 1280 by 800. These settings were at medium, so we might be able to squeeze a little more frame rate out of it. And you'll see some variation there, and I think that might be due to some of the limited memory that it has to work with. It's gotta swap things in and out of RAM to keep the game going here. So not quite smooth, but I think we could probably get there with a few adjustments. We also ran GTA 5, an older game, this one we pushed at a higher resolution, 1920 by 1200, the native resolution of the display, and we ran this at its lowest settings, and there we were getting above 30 frames per second. Uh, as you can see here, we're kind of hovering in the high 30s to mid 40s, so definitely a playable experience there as well. And of course, playing older games, you'll have a very good experience on this setup. I would expect the machine with 16 gigabytes of RAM to do a little better and have a little more consistency in its frame rate, but overall, not bad for this price point. And on the 3 d Mark Time Spy benchmark test, we got a score of 1,286. That puts this machine pretty much in line with what we saw from other Ryzen-based machines we've looked at over the last year or so. We also ran the 3 d Mark Stress Test, and there we got a passing grade of 97.2%. 
that means you'll see a little bit of slow down here, maybe two or three percent when the machine is placed under heavy load over a long period of time, but not a significant degradation of performance. It does, of course, have a fan on board. It will suck air in through the bottom, so you'll want to keep these vents clear, and it exhausts it out the back. The fan isn't all that noisy. You will hear it come on when the system is under load, of course, but generally doing the types of things that I think they designed this computer for, you're not going to hear that fan come on all that often. And even when it's running at full blast, it's not terribly high pitched and not all that distracting. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Linux support. A little bit earlier, we booted up Ubuntu, the most recent version of that operating system and everything got detected and worked properly. That includes the audio, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, the video, the touchscreen, and all in it was a very nice experience running with an alternative operating system. One thing that I noticed as I was testing this is that the prior version of Ubuntu did not properly recognize the audio. This version, the new one, did. So whatever distribution you're using, you'll want to make sure you got the most recent version so that all the drivers necessary get picked up without too much aggravation. But again, the most recent version of Ubuntu functioned just fine on here. So overall, I think this is a pretty good value for what it is. Don't expect much out of it, but I think if you come in with the proper set of expectations, you will be pleased with what you get for the price point here. Dell, of course, makes many higher end machines, but it's nice to see that their lower end here has a good amount of quality and performance for what they are charging. That's going to do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.